parametric equation of a curve is when we represent the x and y coordinates of all the points along this kind of curve using the two separate functions which depends on the third letter t which is going to be a parameter. So by defining different values for the t we can define the points along this curve. So we need the parametric equations in order to represent this kind of curves because we cannot use the ordinary equations since they fail the vertical line test. So today we're going to discuss how to represent a circle using the parametric equations or how to represent a cycloid using the parametric equations and also we're going to discuss the calculus using the parametric equation basically how to find the areas under the curves how to find the tangent lines to the parametric curves and how to find the arc lengths of the parametric curves and also we're going to discuss how to find the surface areas of the solid which are obtained by rotating a parametric curve around some axis. So let's start talking about the parametric equation of a circle. So I would like to express the x and y coordinate of the points along the circle with the radius 1 using the t functions cosine of t and sine of t. So where the t, the parameter, is going to be the angle between the radius to this point and the x-axis. For example, if I choose the t is equal to the 0, this is going to be this point, and the coordinates of this point is equal to the 1 and 0, as we know. Indeed, if I substitute the t to this t equations, it's going to be cosine of 0 and sine of 0, which is going to give me 1 and 0. For example, if I would like to represent this point, this point is located at the angle pi over t from the x-axis and I can find the coordinates of this point by substituting pi over t to this t equation. It's going to be cosine of pi over t which is 0 and sine of pi over t which is equal to the 1. And then the coordinates of this point are equal to the 0 and 1. So this is the parametric equation of the unit circle. If I would like to define the parametric equation of the circle with the radius r, I need to ch make the changes in the state equations. So you see all the x coordinates of the points along this circle have the range between minus 1 and 1. So if I would like to build the circle with the radius r, the points x coordinates of the points should change from minus r to the r. So the range of this function of the cosine is between minus 1 and 1. If I would like to make the range of a function to be equal from minus r to the r, I just need to multiply this to the r. In the same way, I can find the y coordinates of the points along the circle with the radius r by multiplying the r to the sine of t. So the range of this function is also going to be from minus r to the r. Now, if I move the center of the circle to the any other point, was the coordinates a and b, I just need to move the center with the coordinates 0 and 0 to the a units in the x line and y units in the y line. Basically, I'm going to add a to the x and I'm going to add b to the y. This is the parametric equation of a circle with the radius r and with the center at the point a and b. So this curve is called the cycloid. So the parametric equation of the cycloid is given like this. So by finding the different values of the t, I can find the points on along this curve. For example, if I choose the values for the t from 0 to the t pi, I'm going to define all the points on this part of the cycloid. So let's discuss how to find the areas under the parametric curve which are given in this equation. Before we start, let's discuss what is the differential of the x. Differential of the x is equal to the f prime of t dt. So basically dx is equal to the f prime of t dt. So as you remember, we used to find the areas under the curves by integrating the curve y with respect to the x and the range from a to the b. I'm just going to substitute the y with the function of the y, and I'm going to substitute dx with the differential of the x, and it's going to be g of t multiplied as f prime of t dt, where I need to choose the proper range for the t. So t is going to change from alpha to the beta, which should be the same correspond to the range of the x. So let's consider an example. I would like to find this area under the first part of the cycloid where the t is going to change from 0 to the t pi and the radius of the cycloid is going to be 1. The parametric equation of the cycloid with the radius 1 is equal to this one. In order to find the area, I'm just going to substitute the 
uh, y, which is 1 minus cosine of t, and dx, which is going to be the derivative of this function, which is equal to the 1 minus cosine of t here in this integration. So this is going to be 1 minus cosine of t, which is the y, and 1 minus cosine of t dt, which is going to be dx. And I need to integrate this with respect to the t, where the t is going to change from 0 to the t pi. So in order to integrate this, I'm going to square this bracket. It's going to be 1 minus t cosine of t plus cosine square of t. So the integrating the first t part is straightforward. In order to integrate the third part, I'm going to use the formula of the half integral. Basically, the cosine square of t is equal to the 1 plus cosine of t t over t. And I'm going to use this, so cosine of t t plus 1 over t. And I'm going to find the antiderivatives of all these terms, three ter four terms. So 1 plus 1 over t is 3 over t. Its antiderivative is 3 over t multiplied to the t. The antiderivative of the minus t cosine of t is going to be minus t sine of t. And the antiderivative of the 1 over t cosine of t t is going to be 1 over 4 sine of t t. And I have additional 1 over t term here because of this t inside the cosine. And I need to evaluate this at the t pi. If I evaluate this at the t pi, I'm going to have t pi multiplied to the 3 over t, which is 3 pi. These t terms are going to be 0. And if I evaluate the 3 terms at the point 0, all of the 3 terms are going to be 0. The only term which is left is 3 pi, which is obtained by substituting the t pi here on the first term. So let's discuss how to find the area of a unit circle. I'm interested to find the area of a half a circle. In order to do this, I need to integrate. I would integrate the equation of the half a circle from minus one and one. So now I would like to find this using the parametric equations of this circle. I'm going to substitute the y was the y function of the circle, which is equal to the sine of t and f prime of t t dt is going to be minus sine dt, which is the derivative of the x. If x is equal to the cosine of t, the differentiation, differential of the x is going to be minus sine of t dt. If I substitute this, I'm going to get this term, right? So since x, so x used to change from minus 1 and 1, so the values of the t at the minus 1 is going to be pi, and at this point, it's going to be 0. So the t is going to change from pi to the 0. So in order to integrate the sine square of t, or minus sine square of t, I'm going to use the formula of the half an angle. Sine square of t is equal to the 1 minus cosine of 2t over t. So that is y minus sine square of t. It's going to be cosine of 2t minus 1 over t. In order to integrate this, I'm, so I'm going to just integrate this. Anti find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of this term is cosine of 2t over 4 minus the antiderivative of the 1 over t is 1 over 2 t. So I need to evaluate this at the 0, so both of terms are going to be 0. If I evaluate this at the pi, this term is equal to the 0, the second term is equal to the pi over t, the answer should be here pi over t. So let's discuss how to construct the tangent lines. Uh, before we discuss this, let's discuss how to find the derivatives of the y with respect to the x. So if x is given as the function of the t and is y is given as a function of the t, then the derivative of the y with respect to the x is found by di dividing the differential derivative of the y with respect to the t to the derivative of the x with respect to the t. So the second derivative of the y can be found using this formula. So we need to take the derivative of the y with respect to the x using this formula. Then we need to take its derivative with respect to the t and divide this as the derivative of the x with respect to the t. So let's discuss how to build the tangent lines. In order to build the tangent lines to the parametric curves, we need to perform the following four steps. If we're given the curve parametrically, first of all, we need to write down the equation of the tangent line in a general form, which is equal to the mx plus b, where m is going to be the slope of the tangent line, and b is going to be the point where the tangent line intersects with the y-axis. So that is why sometimes this b is called the y-intercept. So the second step is we need to find the slope of this tangent line, and the slope of the tangent line is the value of the y prime at the t0. So we are going to find the derivative of the y with respect to the x and evaluate this at the t0. And in the step number three, we're going to find the point here, x and y coordinates of the point 
where we would like to build a tangent line. So I can find the x and y coordinates of this point by substituting t0, which is a parametric curve, parametric equation of a curve. And at the last step, I need to find a b intercept. So I can find this using this formula. So this is coming from this one. So if this point is like is passing through, the, the if the tangent line is passing through this point, it means that the coordinates of this point should satisfy this equation, right? The coordinates of this point are x0 and y0. This should satisfy this equation. By substituting x0 here and y0 here, we can find a b by subtracting the mx0 from the y0. So let's discuss how to use these steps in, in, a, in an example. So let's say I would like to find the equation of this tangent line to the cycloid at the t is equal to the pi over 3. So this is the parametric equation of the cycloid where the radius is equal to the 1. So in the first step we're going to write down the equation of the tangent line in the form mx plus b. In the step number t we're going to find the slope of the tangent line by finding the derivative of the y with respect to the x and evaluating this at the t is equal to the pi over 3. So the derivative of the y with respect to the x is going to be the derivative of the y with respect to the t. So the derivative of the y with respect to the t is going to be plus sine of t, right? Because the derivative of the 1 is 0, the derivative of the minus cosine of t is plus sine of t divided to the derivative of the x with respect to the t, which is equal to the 1 minus cosine of t. I need to evaluate this y prime at the t is equal to the pi over 3. So sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over t, and cosine of pi over 3 is equal to the 1 over t. If I substitute this, I'm going to get square root of 3. This is going to be the slope of our tangent line. In a step number 3, we need to evaluate, calculate the x and y coordinates of this point. So in order to do this, I need to substitute the pi over 3 to the x. It's going to be pi over 3 minus square root of 3 over t. And I need to substitute t to here. It's going to be 1 minus 1 over t, which is 1 over t. And in the step number 4, we need to find the y-intercept by subtracting the mx0 from the y0. So y0 is 1 over t. And mx0 is going to be this term. So now we've got the m and b of the tangent line by substituting the value of the m and the value of the b to the general form of the tangent line, we can build the tangent line. So the tangent line to the cycloid with the radius 1 at the point t is equal to the pi over 3, it's going to be like this. So let's discuss how to find the arc lengths of the parametric curve. So we used to find the arc lengths using this formula. So I'm just going to substitute the y prime with the formula of the derivative of the y with respect to the x. It's going to be dy dt over dx dt in a square. By given the common denominator, I can find this term. So dx dt is going to be here in the square plus dy dt in a square divided to the denominator, which is dx dt in the square. So I can take out the dx dt from the brackets and it's going to be this term dt dx and I can find the length of the, uh, the curve given parametric, parametrically using this formula. So I need to find the derivative of the x with respect to the t and square this. And add this to the derivative of the y with respect to the t in a square. Take the square root and integrate this. So let's discuss how to find the arc lengths of the cycloid where the t is going to change from 0 to the pi. So the, this is the parametric equation of the cycloid. And where the t is equal from 0 to the 2 pi, I can find the arc lengths of the cycloid in this part. right? So I'm going to substitute the derivative of the x with respect to the t here. I'm going to substitute the derivative of the y with respect to the t here. It's going to be 1 minus cosine of t in the square. And the derivative of the y, it's going to be sine of t. And instead of it, like it's square, it's going to be sine square. So let me open up this brackets. If you open up the brackets, it's going to be 1 minus 2 cosine of t plus cosine square of t. And, and this term is sine square of t. So cosine squared plus sine squared is t, so that I, so is 1, sorry. I can write this with this one as t minus 2 cosine of t. And here I can take out the t out of the brackets and using the half an angle formula, I can write this as t, so 1 minus cosine of t can be written as t sine squared of t over t, right? So with this t, it's going to be 4. 4 sine squared of t over t. If I take out the... 
uh, this t from the brackets, I'm going to get like a sine sine square of t over t from the square root is going to be sine t over t. If I integrate this, antiderivative of this is going to be minus t cosine of t over t. So this t is coming from this t over t. And this t is coming from the square root of 4 here. I need to evaluate this at the t pi and 0. If I put the t pi, it's going to be cosine of pi, which is equal to the minus 1, right? And the cosine of 0 is going to be 1. If I evaluate this, I'm going to get 8, right? So minus 2 multiplied to the minus 1 is going to be 1. If I put the 0, it's going to be minus 2 multiplied to the 1 with the minus, it's going to be 2 again, right? 2 plus 2 is going to be 4. 4 multiplied to this 2 is going to be 8. So the arc lengths of the cycloid, where the t is going to change from 0 to the 2 pi, is equal to the 8. So now let's discuss how to find the surface area of the revolution. So we used to use this formula in order to find the surface area. I'm just going to substitute the y here and y prime here using the previous techniques. So the we can adapt the uh, this formula to the parametric curve in this form, right? So I'm going to put the y as the function of the y, and I'm going to evaluate the arc lengths here using the formula of the arc lengths, which we derived before. So let's apply this to find the surface area of the sphere. So the sphere can be obtained by rotating the semicircle around the x-axis. So the equation of this semicircle is going to be r cosine of t and r sine of t, where the t is going to change from 0 to the pi. So if you rotate this around the x-axis, we are going to obtain the sphere. So now let's discuss how to find the surface area of the sphere where the parametric curve of the semicircle is equal to this one, where the t is going to change from 0 to the pi. So in order to find the surface area, I'm going to substitute the y to here and the dx dy to here. So the derivative of the x with respect to the t is going to be minus r sine of t, and I need to take its square. The derivative of the y with respect to the t is going to be r cosine of t, and I need to put here and by taking out, by squaring everything, I can find as s 2 pi r sine of t. And here it's going to be r square sine square plus r square cosine square. If I take out the r square from the brackets, I'm going to get sine square plus cosine square. And this term is going to be simply r. So with this r, which doesn't depend on the t, I can take this out, the t pi r square from the brackets, right? The only term which is left here inside is simply sine of t. So it's antiderivative is going to be minus cosine of t, and I do need to evaluate this at the pi and zero. At the pi, it's going to be minus one. With this minus, it's going to be one. At the zero, it's going to be one. With this minus, it's going to be plus again, right? It's going to be two multiplied to the t here. It's going to be four pi r squared. 